Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. Maintaining the proper humidity is very important for the health of your boa constrictor. Today I want to show you some ways that you can use to make sure that your boa's enclosure is maintaining an optimal humidity range. If you find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you'd subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any future videos on keeping and breeding boas, as well as regular updates on my boa breeding activities. Humidity, of course, is the amount of water that's dissolved in the air, with 100% relative humidity being the maximum amount of water, so the air is saturated with water vapor. In general, you want to aim for a range of about 60 to 80% relative humidity for your boas. And that's going to vary a little bit uh, based on the locality that the boa originated from. For example, boas with ancestry from a more humid environment, such as the true red tail boas from the Amazon rainforest, are going to require a higher level of humidity, somewhere around the 80% relative humidity range. Whereas boas that come from a drier climate, such as the Sonoran Desert boas or the Tarahumara Mountain boas, are able uh, have to have a humidity of about 50 to 60 percent would probably be the optimal range. So if you're confused it's always a good idea to look up the relative humidity range of the locality where your boa uh, originated or where its ancestry originated and that will give you a better idea about what you should be shooting for. So many boas are pretty tolerant of a wide range of humidity for example, morph boas that have a pretty long history of many generations of being in captivity are more forgiving of humidity. So the humidity range can be a little bit wider and you're not going to have any issues. So in general, I maintain a background humidity in my snake room of about 60%. And then I increase the humidity as needed in the individual enclosures to suit the particular animal that's in that enclosure. So what are the consequences of not maintaining adequate humidity in your boa constrictor's enclosure? Well, the most common that you'll see are issues with shedding. The snake might not be able to shed in one piece. The skin might kind of flake off the snake in patches with patches retained frequently in, over the eye caps and at the tip of the tail. And then you may even have a snake that goes into a shed cycle, but then can't shed at all. It just retains the entire skin stuck to it. So if this happens, uh, you want to soak your snake. In a mild case, usually a, a soak in lukewarm water for a few hours will help the skin to shed off. And usually there's no further issues. But if the skin builds up over multiple cycles, it can cause all kinds of problems. You can have uh, skin infections that can result. You can have the snake build up eye cap uh, scales over its eyes and it can't see through its eyes. Um, if you have buildup of unshed skin at the tip of the tail, the snake can lose the tip of its tail over uh, several shed cycles. So you definitely want to make sure that your animal is able to shed its skin in its entirety. In a minute or two, I'm going to tell you how you can increase your humidity if your animal is having issues with shedding or your humidity is otherwise too low. But I'll also say that there's such a thing as too much humidity in your boa's enclosure. So if you have humidity over 80 or 90 percent, you can have growth of fungus and mildew. Um, this is further exacerbated if your boa's enclosure doesn't have very good ventilation and airflow. So if you have a stagnant, very high humid air, you can have build up a fungus. This can cause all kinds of respiratory issues for your boa, breathing in the spores. In addition, it can cause skin infections, fungal infections of the skin. So you want to go avoid humidity that's too high. Although if your snake's humidity is higher briefly, especially during the shed cycle, this is typically not an issue. You just want to watch to make sure that you don't have growth of any kind of mold. I monitor the humidity both in my snake room and also in some of my snakes enclosures. So I have a basic humidity gauge that I got at my local hardware store that I have up on the wall. And this just tells me the amount of humidity within the room as a whole. 
and typically I aim for about 60% in the room as a whole. And then in some of my snakes enclosures, I have this digital humidity gauge that's mounted, and this will tell me the, the humidity within the enclosure. I don't do this for all my snakes, I just have it for a select few, just to get an idea of the humidity range within the cages. And I found that I don't need to monitor the humidity of each of my individual enclosures, and that's fine for my boas. So how do you maintain the proper humidity for your boas? Well, the first thing that I do is I use a room humidifier to maintain about 60% humidity within my snake room. And I've tried several different types of room humidifiers, and this is the one that I like the best. It's a Levoit Cool Mist Humidifier, and I'll show you how it works. So, you've got this tank here. So, you just open the tank, fill it with water like this. So it's not quite full all the way. It holds uh, about a gallon or so of water. Screw that back on. And then it's got three settings. It's got a, a low, a medium, and a high. So I usually run it on high in my snake room. And you can aim, kind of aim the mist there. But what I like about this unit is it's very durable. I've had it for about two years now, and I run it pretty much all day um, and it's never failed on me. I've tried these other uh, hot humidifiers that I get at my local uh, drugstore and they last about a week or two and then they stop working. But this design works really well for humidifying your snake room. So if you're interested in buying one of these, there's a link below in the description where you can uh, look, get more information about them and buy one if you'd like. Once you have an adequate level of humidity within your whole snake room, you want to think about the humidity within each of your individual boas enclosures. And the first thing that you want to think about is the substrate. And substrate has a big effect on the humidity. So some substrates hold a lot more moisture than others. So what I found is the substrate that holds the most humidity is coconut husk bedding. So this is made out of the husk of a coconut and it has a very spongy texture that absorbs a lot of moisture and holds the humidity. I found that it can be too humid in some applications and when you get it in a block you have to soak it in water in order to get it into this granular form and if you use it right from the get-go I found that it's too humid and you know it'll grow mildew so I typically will dissolve it in the water or you know use the water to break up the block and then I'll let it dry a bit until it's not very moist anymore. And then I'll put it in my boas, tubs, or enclosures, and I'll spray it down to maintain the humidity. So here I have a tub that has the coconut husk bedding. And what I'll do is I'll spray down with a spray bottle several times a week. Just give it a few sprays like this. and the coconut will absorb all that moisture and create an adequate humidity environment. It's got a very nice, rich, organic smell as well. You see, I also have this piece of newspaper in here, and if this, the coconut doesn't provide enough humidity, just putting a piece of wad in newspaper is a very inexpensive and easy way of maintaining humidity. You can spray the newspaper, the snake can kind of burrow under there and get more humidity. And typically, I'll put one of these in when the snake is in shed, if my snake has had any shedding issues. The coconut bedding that I use is called Pro Coco, and if you're interested in finding more about it, there's a link below in the video description that you can read about it and purchase some if you like. With regard to other substrates, I found that Aspen doesn't hold quite as much humidity as the coconut, but it does hold some. And aspen is typically adequate level of humidity for most of my snakes if I spray it down two or three times a week. I found that the paper-based substrates like newspaper or corrugated cardboard have the least amount of humidity. And you can spray those down and they, they do maintain some humidity, 
uh, but not as much as the wood-based or particulate substrates. So you definitely want to think about your choice of humidity if your animal is having shedding issues or if you have any issues with humidity in your snake room. So the last thing you want to consider when you're thinking about your snake's humidity is the actual cage design. So in general, tubs and specially designed snake cages will hold humidity better than more arcane solutions such as fish tanks with screen lids. If you have a screen lid or screen cover over a large area of your snake's cage, there's going to be much more airflow and it's not going to hold the humidity as well. So in general, I would recommend using a tub or a specially designed snake cage that holds the humidity better. But on the other hand, you want adequate ventilation because if you have something that has no airflow, then you're going to get potentially too high humidity and you could possibly have issues with mold and mildew. So you want to balance your, the design of the cage as well as the humidity and the ventilation to make sure that you maintain that 60 to 80% relatively humidity range. And then just kind of, you know, tinker it depending on your particular animal. Most boas will do fine in that range. Some might need a higher range such as the true red tails if they have shedding issues. To end the video, I thought I'd show you this 2015 female Coops Pastel Colombian boa. So this is a selectively bred line of Colombian boas that have been selectively bred for this beautiful pastel orange color. And this is a project that was started by a breeder in Germany uh, several decades ago. And he, you know, basically just took the boas that had the most red color of normal Colombian boas. He bred them together. And then the babies he selected for babies that had even more red orange color and so on for a number of generations until he got these beautiful pastel red orange boas and this project was continued by Vin Russo who got the uh, orange colors even more intense and this animal was produced by Vin Russo in 2015 and this is a female that has a very deep rich orange red pastel one of the most uh, deeply colored pastels that I've seen. Now, most pastel boas, rather than being a single gene type of morph, they're controlled by multiple genes. So we have multiple genes that together give the animal these deep, rich colors. And so if you breed two pastel boas together, some of the babies are gonna be even more intense than the parents. Um, you can breed a, a pastel to a non-pastel and some of the babies are going to inherit the pastel traits from the one of the parents. So it's just a really cool boa to have. You know, I think they're beautiful. They don't scream morph. You know, they just look like beautiful, very richly colored Colombian boas. And this particular line is a pure Colombian line. So it's also a, a pure uh, Colombian locality boa. So this animal is now going on five years old and I think she'll be ready to breed next year. And I have a male, a Coupes Pastel male that I'm gonna breed her with. So a lot of the Coupes Pastels have been crossed into morph projects and the pure Colombian Coupes uh, bloodline is lost. So I'm happy to have two pure animals and I'm gonna be breeding together to generate some more uh, pure Coupes Pastel boas. Um, just a really cool bow to have and as I've said before I think the Colombian just your normal Colombian boas are probably your best all together pet boa uh, just in terms of their ease of care and their temperament and handleability so highly recommended animal for beginners and for seasoned boa collectors alike the Coupes Pastel Colombian so I hope this video was helpful Thanks for tuning in. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.